y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the Spirit and the truth. I love them old church That old brother, song. pick up that old hymn book and you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting their feet, clapping their hands and all of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. Let's look quickly at uh, uh, the Gospel John, Gospel John chapter 1, verses uh, 11 and 12. And we, we find something that's very interesting because we find uh, our Lord and Savior, I believe that's what we read, that says something that's just really impossible, unthinkable, uh, in the fact that he uh, makes a statement. He says that he and I want you to think about this for a moment. He, have you ever been rejected before? Yeah. You ever been rejected before? Have you ever been the kid on the blacktop and they're picking four on four basketball and they chose everybody but you? Uh, they, they picked you last. You were an afterthought. You were the leftover. The feeling of resentment, the feeling of pain and agony. More than that, have you ever felt rejected when you have done nothing but try to, to be the best that you could be, the, the most that you could do for someone? And nothing seems to matter. You, you've told them in John 8 and 12 that I'm the light of the world, and they rejected that concept. <laughs> you told them that you are the bread of life, they rejected that concept. You, you told them that you were the door. You, 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 in other words, you constantly present yourself to someone over and over and over again, only to meet the same rejection. Something about you folk just don't connect with. Something about you is never good enough. I'll be on your street in just a minute. There, there, there's something about you. You've been rejected so much that you find yourself uh, doing anything you can do to be accepted by this culture. If, if this culture uh, put earrings in their nose, you put an earring in your nose because you, you want to be accepted. If, if this culture uh, tattoo their whole face like, like, like Mike Tyson, you put one on your face. Just whatever you can do to be accepted. We, we want to be accepted. We want to be believed in. We want to be valued. We want to be thought of. We want to be uh, considered as good as anybody else can become almost psychologically damaging. Here Jesus teaches us a very valuable lesson. He was a man acquainted with sorrows and grief. He understood more than you could ever understand rejection, usury, and debauchery. Yet it's Jesus that teaches us in this wonderful text how to live after you've been rejected. Because oftentimes when we're rejected, we don't know how to move forward after the rejection. Right. It causes us to be insecure. It causes us to doubt ourselves. It lowers our self-esteem. It causes us to try one thing after another just to be able to say, I'm accepted by somebody. Right. But magnify that all by 10%. But when you are rejected by the very people who supposed to be family, Y'all okay. are like saying men. Right. When, when, when you are the black sheep of the family, uh -huh. when your mama rejects, when your daddy rejects you, when you're rejected of your own people, Amen. Right. we need to know how do I live past and through the rejection. Amen. Okay. And God says that I'm a savior. I'm, I'm a savior who understands rejection because I too have been rejected. Uh -huh. He says I came to my own and my own would not receive me. All right. But as many as received, to them I gave the power to be the sons of God. Okay. Everybody that you've met has not rejected you. All right. But the folk you think and want to accept you All right. have rejected you. Appreciate the power is not the focus on the folks that rejected you. All right. But the way you live past the rejection is the focus on the folk who see you as God sees you. Y'all say amen. amen. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, in John 1, and the Word was with God, and the Word 
was God and the word manifested itself in the flesh. They didn't just reject Jesus. And I'll show you this They rejected the word of God. Yes. Uh -huh. And because they rejected the word of God, and uh -huh. you're trying to stand by the word of God, they have to reject you. Okay. Uh -huh. In other words, Jesus teaches us living past our rejection means that we need to understand that folk don't always see things like God sees things. All right. mm -hmm. in, fact, in fact, when folks see you for who you really are, and you don't have to put on makeup to be nobody else, and, and you ain't got to put on no wig to be nobody else, and, right. and you ain't got to put on fake hair to be nobody else, and yeah. you ain't got to put on no stilettos. I know your All feet right. hurt oh, trying yeah. to look like the Kardashians. You ain't got to put no fake All butt right. on. You can just be your God. Right. You can be yourself. You ain't got to impress nobody. That's a pretty special person that see you just the way you are. Amen. 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 And I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, if you've ever been rejected, you look at that joker that's rejected. You say, look, you blind, cock-eyed witch. I don't care about what you think about me. God sees me for who I am. They didn't just reject him. But the text says, watch this. The text right. says that, that he said the men have received, he gave them the power to be the sons of God. Right. Now, well, first of all, you need to understand something. The reason they can't see you is because they don't have the power. All right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That there's another spirit that don't let them see what's good for them, and they always pick something that's bad for them. You ought to be glad when they, when they can't right. see you, that means they wouldn't follow you in the first place. Yeah. If he couldn't yeah. see you, if she couldn't see you and put you on the on the, on the trophy where you belong, right. that's they had love. Right. They didn't have the power. They didn't have the spiritual wherewithal. They didn't have the mental capacity right. to see something special that was right in front of them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, amen. 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 I, 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 watch the text. The text says, even them that believe, watch what he says, he says, give them to be the sons of God. Uh, he says, even to them that believed on his name. So it was not a matter of believing he was Jesus. Uh, they didn't, first of all, the text starts off with, in the beginning was the what? Word. Was the word. They can see the word. All right. The word prophesies that Jesus was coming in the flesh. Okay. Isaiah 9 says, am I right about it? Amen. The Bible says that, that, that to us a child was born, to us a child was given. He talked about Jesus coming in the flesh. Uh -huh. Over and over, scriptures pointed, the word pointed that Jesus was coming. And because they rejected the word, they couldn't see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ah, Y'all all right? All right. All right. All right. Now watch this. Because they couldn't see the word, he says, he said, I came to my own, they received me not. How do you mean they didn't receive? How do you know they rejected the word? They killed over 300 prophets by then. Uh -huh. They murdered kings. They rebelled against everything God had put in front of them. Every prophet that came and preached the word of God, they stoned and they murdered because they rejected the word of God. So when God manifested himself in the word, which they had already rejected, there was no way they were going to see Jesus for who he really was. Uh -huh. You know why folk want to have sex with you before marriage? Because they don't see how precious you are as a virgin. And because yeah. they don't see they yeah. trust the word of God, they see you as a piece of meat. They can't see what they need to see for. And when you manifest yourself in your life, the first thing you want to do is get naked and start bumping and grinding. Right. Amen. Uh -huh. Because they rejected the word. Uh -huh. They can't see the word. I wish I had been praying church over here. Right. And, when you, and when you reject the word, you can't help but think sexual about other folk because you don't value the word. And when you reject the word, you reject what God has put in front of you. Right. Mm -hmm. They rejected Jesus. And he says, I give you the power to see what God has. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, it says, if thy gospel be here, it is here to them that is lost, right. and whom the gods of this world had hidden from them. Sometimes we are so special. God is so special. God, God is, has something so special he puts in front of you that the devil don't want you to see it. All right. They can't see what a good mom you are, because right. the devil done hid, blinded. They can't see what a good daddy you are, All right. because the devil done hid, Daddy's ought to be shouting out right now. Y'all be amen. All, right. All, right. All you can see is when I leave my socks out. Right. But you don't see how hard I sweat in those socks to make some money for us to have somewhere to live in the first place. Y'all right. amen. Yeah. If the gospel is here, it is here to them that are lost and whom the gods of this world have hidden from them. Right. Sometimes our work is hidden from other folk because the demons in this world don't want folk to see just how good we are. Amen. And so I actually feel sorry for folk when they look at me and can't see what God sees. All right. Because I know the devil working on me. Uh -huh. You looking at a dun right now and don't even recognize it. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. You looking at pure sexy right now and don't even recognize it. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. You looking at a genius right now. Uh -huh. Can you see a, if you can see a genius, can you shout, thank you, Jesus? Uh -huh. I didn't give it to her, but that's all right. I know who I am. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Anyhow. 
It is because they have rejected God's word. Uh -huh. And they only can see in the flesh that they do not realize that the flesh is now manifested. Emmanuel, God with us. Uh -huh. God for us. And God be through us and in us that we make heaven our home. Even them that believe in his name which were, which were not born of blood. What God's getting ready to do to you, what God's going to do for you is not going to be in the flesh. Uh -huh. what God's getting, when God wants to move in your life, he makes a spiritual movement in the heavens first. Once he prepares, he makes a spiritual movement in the, in the heavens. He said, it is not by the will of the flesh. It is not by the will of man. It is not predicated on who like you and who don't like you. When God anoints your life, he anoints your life because he had that plan for you in spite of who rejects you. Amen. Hold your head up and smile in spite of the rejection because they can't see because they're blinded by the enemy. But God can see because God don't see the flesh. But God sees what's in the heart of the individual. Uh -huh. Aren't you glad this morning? Aren't you glad with all the mistakes and things we made that God does not see as men see? But God looks at the heart of a man. And so he doesn't spend his time talking about the mistakes that we made. He doesn't spend his time talking about the errors that we're going to make. But God says, I know what I put and I manifest it inside of this person. And I know that that person is going to do my will. Well, how then do I do the will of God? And how do I live after I've been rejected by my own family, by my friends, by my kinsmen? I'm glad you asked that question. Because we realize that most folk don't really want us until they need something. Y'all don't smile like that? Amen. Amen. Now, now I want you to understand something when I say this to you. When Jesus came down this old rusty, dusty, dusty world, folk did not believe that he was the manifestation of God's word. Mm -hmm. But they ate every piece of fish All right. that he made. Okay. They didn't believe that he had power to heal Yet they got up and walked with no problem. Uh -huh. But on the day of the cross, they broke out running as fast as they could. Uh -huh. right. Folk didn't believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Yet they did not turn down not one miracle that he, that he did. Uh -huh. They accepted everything they could get from him while denying him as the Son of God all in the same breath. Uh -huh. And I stop by the tell there are folk that are take from you and take from you and take from you and hate you and not believe in you all in the same breath and wouldn't think nothing about it because uh -huh. it's in man not to believe and not to accept and not to trust other folk. Uh -huh. Yet God still blessed them. God acknowledges, he knows that no matter how much you do for folk, sometimes folk will be in love with taking from you mm -hmm. but never want to give themselves to you. Mm -hmm. And John 6 in verse number 26, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Uh -huh. And we have created a group of people who now come to church not because of what God has done for them and need them in their life, but they come to church because they want something from God. Uh -huh. Every prayer we quench, we hear nowadays start out with, Lord, give me this, uh -huh. and Lord, give me that. Give me a little more of this. And give me a little more than that. Uh -huh. But never, never stop for a moment and decide that you're actually going to give yourself unto God. Amen. Sometimes I wonder if God went in the blessing business, would people even come to the house of God? Uh -huh. If God said, I'm not going to give you nothing but what I gave you that's life on this side of life, I think folk would stop even dealing with God. Uh -huh. God recognizes his spirit. He recognizes his attitude. That there are some blessed only Christians and some blessed only people back in those days who only want a relationship with him when things are good. But outside of things when good, they don't want anything to do with him at all. Uh -huh. They don't want nothing to do with him. If, you ain't, if he ain't got a blessing, I don't want to hear about no Bible. Uh -huh. You have a good time, I don't want to hear about no Bible. If he's not doing something, I don't want to hear about it. Uh -huh. It's a form of usury and rejection. Well, preacher, how do I, how do I live my life? After the rejection, the Bible says he came to his own, and his own received him not. Mm -hmm. he, re he was rejected by his own family and kidney. He was rejected by the house of Israel. But one of the things that we notice is that immediately in the text, instead of talking about who rejected him, he just said, my own and my kinsman. But he went on and said, but for as many as them. So one of the things we learn from God in the text Stop focusing on who rejected you uh -huh. and start focusing on who believes in you. Amen. Stop spending your time on folk who won't, don't have the decency and the respect to return your phone call and focus on folk who will call you just to see how you're doing. Stop Amen. fooling with folk that's looking at you like you owe them something, like they're doing you a favor and start spending your time with folk who are on the battlefield and on the front lines with you. Stop Amen. fooling with folk. Amen whose only purpose in life is to sit there and get stuff for them who wouldn't do nothing to say, help, help, help do anything for you. Stop focusing on the negative and focus on folks who are 
we said, we told his preachers, and not a woman was a woman. In Matthew 10 and verse 14, he's out training you to preach, and when you enter into a house, when you go into a city, and folk reject your word, he said, don't you spend your time worrying about why folk ain't coming to church. Don't you spend your time worrying about who like you, who don't like you. Don't you spend your time trying to figure out schizophrenic, bipolar church members. He said, what you do is I want you to shake the dust off your feet and keep right on preaching the word of God. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You can sit all day worrying about who don't like you all you want to. They're not going to like you because you're worried about them not liking you. If they don't like you, they don't like you because they've been blinded of how good you are. Amen. Focus on the folk who love you and then bag up they love you by the actions that they do in your life. Amen. 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 Walls. Amen. Walls. It happens. We spend too much time worrying about what somebody did to me and who don't like me and who, 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 why, why I'm not in this club and why I don't need to be in any club. I don't need to be in any group but in the, in the, when the saints go marching. Am I right about it? So I'm used to saying when the saints, when the saints go marching, uh -huh. oh, I want to be. In that, in that number. Amen. When the saints go marching in. Mm -hmm. If you're not in that number, what a sad day is going to be. Amen. Focus more time on folk who aren't even in the number. Mm -hmm. When you could have been focusing on folk who are going the same direction that you're going in. Amen. The Bible says in John 15 and verse number 8, just remember in this word that there are going to be folk that hate you. Uh -huh. But your focus not on folk that hate you because they don't really hate you. But they hate Jesus. They hate what Jesus stands for. They hate structure. They hate discipline. They hate order. They hate ethics. They hate morals. They hate justification. They hate grace. They hate forgiveness. They can't stand nothing godly. And you old church Bible thumping person to them. They live like ravaged dogs. They do whatever they want to do. It's not you personally. He said, don't take it personal. They just hate what you stand for. Y'all ought to say amen. Yeah. You see, it's, it's, it's hard for a demon when a demon, when a demon is sitting in the presence of peace with God, when he looks at you, he says, You look just like me. You're not better than me. I know I'm the money. And I don't understand why God forgives you when you make a mistake and, and helps you move on forward. And yet I'm sitting over here just as black hard as I was when I came in here. Mm. It's not you that he hates what God is doing in and through your life. Mm. They didn't necessarily hate Jesus. They hated what was in Jesus. Mm. For he was God with us. Uh -huh. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, around verse 19, he says, let me tell you something. To when God was in me, hold on a minute, that when they looked at Jesus, what they were really frustrated about was not Christ, it was what was operating inside of the body. All right. When you have the Spirit of God inside of you, and folks see you empowered by the presence of God, folks get mad and start rejecting you okay. and saying you can't be who you say you are because you look just like me. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, Lord have mercy. Let me, let me try to help you understand that we can go home the problem with the problem many of the Jews was that they were expecting a savior to come riding in on a big old stallion. Mm. All right. And instead of riding in on a stallion, he came riding in on a donkey. Mm. And as he rolled into the city, they were celebrating. Our king is here. The savior is here. He's going to beat up everybody. Mm. And everything is going to be all right. And he came in and said, no, I came to promote peace. And I'm riding on a donkey. All right. Well, that was unacceptable because what they wanted to see was somebody who was tall like Saul, handsome, good looking, riding in with two swords on each side, an electric shield before there was electricity, All right. ready to tell everything in presence that ever did anything to him. He said, no, 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 no. I'm coming just like this and lay your palm trees down. And then they said, told everybody, stop worshiping him. He can't be God. We reject him as the Savior. Mm -hmm. He said, these should hold their peace. The rocks shall immediately cry out. Amen. What is your point, preacher? Mm -hmm. Many times we walk up to folk, and we don't look as good as what they imagine we walk up to them. Mm -hmm. we don't, we're not as sexy as they wanted us to be. We don't have all the stuff that, we, that they imagine they have. Uh -huh. And they look at us and say, that's not good enough. Uh, That's not what I was looking for. Okay. You ought to tell them thank you anyway. Yeah. I 
appreciate them. You don't know a good thing when you see it, honey? I'm sorry for you. Am I right about it? Because I know, I know what's inside of y'all. I say amen. I know who I am. You don't define me by your standards. I define who I am. I might not be as pretty as she is, and I might not be as ugly as he is, but one thing I am that I am. He teaches us that our focus is not on the folk that hate us, but the focus on those who accept us. Listen to his teaching in Luke 14 and verse number 24 when he says, these men have rejected my supper. Just imagine Jesus inviting you over for dinner. He said, let me tell you something. We're not going to focus on those folk who didn't come. And that's some of us today, church. Sometimes right. we spend our time focusing on folk, people that didn't come to church. Uh -huh. Then spending our focus, our time focused on people who are at church. Amen. We need to spend time focusing on people who keep their hand in the Lord's hand. Am I right about uh -huh. it? We need to encourage those who stand in the midst of crisis. We need to stand with those who fall that we know God is going to lift up sometime. We need to spend time looking at those who worship God in spite of the circumstances that still can shout amen and thank you Jesus. And watch you would tell those who are not at the feast. He said, let me tell you something. Every one of them that didn't come to my invitation, he said, tell them they shall not taste of this good taste of dinner. Am I right about it? I don't know about you, but I don't want God to tell me that I'm not getting up to eat. Am I right about it? I don't want God to tell me uh, that I can't come to the dinner table. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, he sets the banquet table. Uh, his banner over us uh, is love. Am I right about it? Uh, there's no chef uh, that can cook it up like Jesus. Am I right about it? He said, every one of you that reject my invitation won't get the blessings that I have for you. In order to receive uh, or to receive the blessings, you got to accept the invitation. And when you accept the invitation, you'll get the blessings. Amen. 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 To come to a close, we find then that we have to live and look for the manifestation of what God has for us. They have received the word of God from John 1 to verse number 14 that he had manifested himself. And verse number 11, but they had rejected the manifestation. Sometimes you might not be able to understand it all. You might not be able to figure it out. But you know if you met somebody that's full of the Holy Ghost, am I right about it? I don't care if they fall and make mistakes every now and again. You know somebody who has the Spirit of God. You might not want to accept it, but you know it. You need to look for folk who have the Spirit of God. You need to look for folk that don't spend time trying to please you, but trying to please God, am I right about it? You need to stay by folk who God is using, am I right about it? You need to stand by folk who shout, thank you, Jesus, in the midst of their storms. Look at the scriptures, if you will. Romans 8, verse 28 and 29. Look at Romans 8, verse 28 and 29. You need to stay with folk who God is doing something through. You need to stay with folk who God is working with. You need to stay with folk that don't allow the devil to use them. You need to stay with folk that put God first. You need to stay with folk that talk about Jesus. You need to stay with folk that give God praise. You need to stay away from folk that won't say thank you, Jesus. You need to stay away from folk that don't pray loud. You need to stay away from folk that won't live right. You need to stay away from folk that don't have the respect for God. You need to stay away from folk who have a fighting spirit. Stay away from folk who don't have any other practice with God other than Sunday and Thursday night. You need to stay with folk who have the manifestation of God working in their life. That's how you live after rejection. The Bible says what? He says what? And we know that all things work together. Uh, uh, where are you at now? We are Romans, Romans 8, 8 verse okay. 28. Alright, I wonder for he's a Jew, he, for he's not a Jew, uh, he, for he's not a Jew, which is of one outwardly, neither he's that of the circumcision, which is outwardly of the flesh, but he's a Jew uh, of one of the inward part, and a circumcision of the heart, of the spirit, and not of the letter, whose praise is not of man. But of God, perhaps I took you to the wrong place. That's all right. That'll work anyway. For we know that all things work together for good. But those who are called, you need to stay with folk who are called by the Lord. Uh -huh. I don't care if you want to preach, but have you been called to preach? Uh -huh. Is God using you while you preach it? I don't care how many folk you know preaching, but have you been called? And those who have not been called, you need to learn to shut up and respect the call. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Anyhow, Amen. respect the call. Stop hating. Stop hating. No, you can't do what I can do. You haven't been called to do what I can do. Amen. You can't even study two chapters. Uh -huh. You can't even
can't even humble yourself and risk God can't even use you. You're too arrogant to be up trying to preach. Mm -hmm. Too unlearned to be up trying to preach. Sit down somewhere. Mm -hmm. Sit down. Put the Bible down. Just listen for a minute. All right. Amen, walls. That's bumblebees, witches, goblins, rattlesnakes, and spiders. Mm -hmm. All right. But God is right anyway. Uh -huh. Jesus said, listen, if you're not going to believe me, then believe the miracles. Then believe the things that I do. If you don't accept me, accept the work. As I come hasten to a close, we need to reject certain things, but accept all things that are godly. Right. God says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. I believe that every person here has the Spirit of God working in them, but whether or not they use it is a choice they may find in Romans 6 and 13. For it says we yield ourselves to be servants of the devil, to him we belong. But we yield ourselves to be servants of the Lord. To him we also receive right. righteousness unto eternal life. As we look at these scriptures, we'll find that we've been given an option of the Holy Spirit. 1 John 2 and verse number 10. And that spirit cannot be quenched unless we quench it. That spirit of God that's in you, there's nothing nobody can say or do to take the spirit of God from you. You know why they can't take it from you? You know why that, those people can't take nothing from you? Because they didn't give it to you. Right. God gave you a spirit that at your worst point you still call out to him in the midnight hour. God's giving you a spirit when everybody else turned their back on you. When days come when nobody will talk to you but the Lord, you still keep praising God. God gave you a spirit that will never fail if you trust in him and never die. Oh, I'm so glad that I have this spirit. There have been days and times when I knew that no, nothing around me really accepted me. There have been days and times where I had to realize that everybody in front of me just waiting on me to fail. Mm -hmm. People sitting around me just hoping something go wrong. There are times I have to come to the realization that there's no love in this house. There's nobody who knew any real intent to really help me build this ministry. There have been days and times when I have to come to the realization the only friends I know are fake friends. The only people I know that are sometimes in people are. The people I know reject me as who I am. I have to be somebody else to be accepted. Uh -huh. But during those times, oh, there's a spirit inside of me that starts to burn. And I say to myself, and nobody but me and the Lord praise him, we're going to praise the Lord anyhow. Amen. I made up in my mind.